While you're waiting for the next episode, check out some of my pod friend shows. Hey, I'm Sammy. Ready for something frightful? Come join me and guest narrators as we read real stories from the paranormal. Suddenly their bedroom door handle started being violently janked up and down like someone was having a go at it and then everything just stopped. To creepy encounters with people who have nefarious intentions. And it was the same two people. It turns out those two had connections to a human trafficking ring. Subscribe to the It's Frightful podcast in Apple Podcast or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Until next time. It's not like we needed to sleep tonight anyways. Welcome back to It's Haunted, What Now? I'm your host, Lainey. We are naturally curious of the paranormal, but equally afraid. What is more terrifying than being tormented by something you can't see? The ones we do see, the ones that come with warnings, and the ones who seem to visit many people around the world. These four stories remind us what it is we fear about ghost stories and even dip into the realm of folktales. Okay, ready to get spooked? Our first story comes from Moth00, who thought a mythical being from Irish lore may have come into their home a few days before Christmas. had some experiences seeing shadow people as a child, but in the past 10 to 12 years, I haven't really experienced anything other than a weird shape in my peripheral vision or a weird feeling of being watched. Nothing too major. That was until the night of the 23rd of December. I couldn't really sleep that night because I had been working a late shift and was still kinda in an energetic mood. Weirdly though, That afternoon, when I was sitting on my bed, putting my shoes on, I could have sworn I felt something touch my foot from under the bed. I didn't really pay much attention to it. I just remember thinking, Oh god, that's weird. But it was the middle of the day, and I was running late. Anyways, that night, once I did finally get to sleep, I kept being awakened by scratching noises. That sounds a lot scarier than it is, because we always get mice in our attic in winter, so it wasn't really anything new or scary. However, the third or fourth time it happened, it startled me because it sounded different. This time it sounded like... I guess I would say it sounded like someone really lightly running their finger along the wall. Not scratching it or anything, just like someone really, really lightly running a finger along the wall. I also noticed that my wardrobe door was open. In my culture, there is a lot of superstition specifically surrounding wardrobe doors being open. I actually have a string keeping it closed, which would have had to have been untied to open the wardrobe. This immediately made me think something spooky was afoot but I was so tired that I was just happy to ignore it. Anyways, I turned on the light, and of course, there was nothing to be seen. So I got a drink, took a few breaths, and went back to sleep. I then awoke at 7 o'clock, lying on my side facing the wall. For some reason, I got this overwhelming urge to turn around, and before I knew it, I was already rolling over. I noticed that there was what looked to be a shadow man. 
I'm not sure why, but I had the distinct sense that it was a male, standing about one meter away from the side of my bed. I got the feeling that it was facing me, but peculiarly, it had no head. It wasn't like it had been decapitated or anything gruesome like that. It just had an uninterrupted line across from one shoulder to the other. As well as that, I remember it not having any hands, like its arms just ended in a sort of rounded point. I also immediately noticed that it was quite small, maybe five feet tall, possibly less. I'm 5'11", and I could tell it was a decent bit shorter than I. I did not feel threatened at all at the time. I just saw it, thought, oh wow, this is actually happening, and then immediately thought, this isn't what I imagined you would look like. For reference, as a child, I remember frequently seeing a huge shadow figure pretty often, so in my mind, that's what a shadow person was supposed to look like. Anyways, I then kind of snapped out of it and dove for the light switch. This meant passing by the entity in order to reach the switch. It didn't move or run or anything. It just stood still. When I passed it, though, I did notice a coldness in that area and the air feeling thick or dense. That's the only word I can think of. As soon as the light was on, it began to fade into like a smoke but there was still a clear outline of it for a few seconds. The best way I could describe it is like, you know when it's really hot outside and you can see the heat waves rising off the road? Yes, well, it looked exactly like that wavy air, but in the shape of the shadow. I am from Ireland and assuming this was one of the Ishi, I asked it to leave in Irish I then felt the newfound sense of dread momentarily lift, but when I sat back down on my bed to kind of process my thoughts, I felt a rush of cold air come towards me, and I did feel a sense of anger or annoyance, but I can't explain where or what it was coming from, almost as if the air was angry at me. Naturally, I decided this was a battle I was not willing to fight and left the room. As soon as I closed the door, though, I noticed that my two pet ferrets were both wide awake and had all their fur standing up fully on end. I brought them both into my room then, and they both immediately started hissing and puffing their fur up at something. I have never in my life seen them act this way, so it really did freak me out. I had been hoping to just pass this off as some sort of hallucination, but their actions unfortunately made me feel quite justified in my fears. I was initially worried that it was a fair Dorica of Irish folklore, a shadow man of the sea who acts as a warning of your death. But it doesn't fit any of the descriptions of him from our mythology, which honestly was the best Christmas surprise ever. I fully thought I was a goner there for a while, Okay, so first of all, apologies for the Irish pronunciations. I tried so hard. <laughs> so I'm absolutely glad this shadow man wasn't a fear dorka and that you're not a goner. At first I thought you may have encountered the hat man many people have spoken of, but your shadow person didn't have a head or hands and it was small. I don't know if missing a head made it seem shorter to you, but for some reason when an entity is smaller than average, it just ups the creep factor. The only piece of advice I can offer you is don't eat the fairy food and thank your ferrets for me for keeping you safe and sane. Our second story comes from Andrea or Andrea, who only wanted a little bit of peace and privacy, but got chaos and an unforgettable experience. <laughs> I'm a freshman in college. I've had more than just one paranormal encounter, but this is by far the worst. 
I attend an all-girls Catholic school, and it's almost 100 years old with cemeteries on campus for the nuns we have. That's not relevant to this story, but I just wanted to provide details. Anyway, it was about 10 p.m. on a weekday when I started getting bubble guts. I had to use the restroom, and I mean use the restroom. I hate going number two in the restroom on my floor because someone is always in there. Before I tell you this next part, I just want to say that I have been doing this for a very long time and never face any problems until that day. I use the restroom in the basement. I promise the basement doesn't look like what you think it does. It looks decent and it connects to the first floor lobby via a small staircase, so I was never afraid. Not only that, but the restroom down there is pretty nice and clean. When the elevator brought me down to the basement, I walked in getting ready to do my business. When I opened the bathroom door, I noticed a stall door was closed. I was surprised because in all my times doing this, no one has ever been in here besides another freshman teammate of mine who did the same thing. Immediately thinking it was her, I peered under the stalls to see her blue Crocs, except there was nothing there. No feet. I figured someone got embarrassed that I walked in and picked up their feet or something like that. I decided to leave them alone, and as I turned my back to leave, the toilet paper in that stall started getting yanked out. It was being pulled out so fast. It made its container shake, making a loud noise. My heart picked up its pace, but I convinced myself that someone was in there and was just now in a rush. I left and headed towards the elevator. After I pushed the button, the toilet paper stopped. The elevator was taking forever, and just as I was losing my patience, I heard the stall door from inside the restroom fly open. It flew open as if someone had kicked it open. At this point, I knew the stairs were the smart option. The stairwell is located right next to the elevator, so I wasted no time. I opened the basement door, and just as I stepped into the stairwell, the bathroom door opened. But again, as if someone had kicked it open with enough force to make it hit the wall. My brain was still telling me that it was just a person who was in a rush, but my body didn't let me turn around to check. Just as I had made it up the first flight of stairs, the worst thing happened. The basement door that I had just walked through swung open. Again, as if someone had kicked it open. Following that, loud, heavy footsteps were coming up after me, and they were moving quickly. I was afraid, but didn't let it get to me. I had already passed the first floor door, and only lived on the second floor, so I started running. The other footsteps seemed to be echoing loudly through the stairwell. I was getting my keys ready to open my floor door, and when I got to it, the footsteps got closer and louder while I unlocked the door. I ran inside and bolted to my room door, the first door on the left wing. I put my back against my room door and waited. Just a second later, the same loud footsteps ran through the hall and sounded like they stopped in the dead middle. I poked my head around the corner, expecting to see my teammate pranking me, but there was nothing except the stairwell door closing. I ran to the middle of that area to look down the right wing hall, and there was still nothing. I still tell myself that it was just a person who was in a rush, and I didn't see them. The sound of the toilet paper and the sounds of the fast, heavy footsteps haunt me when I think about them. I'm uneasy and unsure about the whole incident. The only thing I'm sure about is that I'll never go back to that restroom again. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I don't blame you. 
That is one of the scariest stories I have ever heard and honestly one of my biggest fears. I hate the idea of being in a restroom and something crazy or paranormal happening. You had me in the first half, not gonna lie, and I would have been fine with the story ending after you got to the staircase. But whatever it was kept coming after you or following your same direction. I can't wrap my head around that and you are so brave for going back into the hall to investigate. I would have barricaded my door after an experience like that. From now on, you should totally stick to using the more populated restrooms. Alex brings us our third tale about a fun ghost tour that turned into a real ghost story. There's one memory in my life that I can't rationalize. What I saw was not what I would call paranormal, but out of place in time and space. I don't believe I will ever solve this. I don't expect anyone to, but I would like to share this experience. Maybe some people would call this paranormal, but I'm very skeptical. I do plan to go back one day to see if by any chance I will find answers. I would also like to say I had a witness with me and both of us were sober. So without further ado, let me tell you about the day, 2017, the Dungeons, Berlin. We queued up for a tour to the Lady in White, also known as the Ghost of Hole Henselern. No spoilers. So there was an actress in the dark, dressed in white, Screaming while the lights flash, and then they tell us the story of the ghost. Definitely worth seeing. I like the Berlin Dungeons, and there is a lot more to it, but I'm keeping it relevant anyways. After this, we go about our day seeing other parts of Berlin City. We were getting to the end of the day. It was a cold day, and the weather was miserable. We walked a little further out to the river and were crossing the bridge, As we were walking, we are looking out to the river and enjoying the view. I took my eyes off the river, and when I turned to face the path, I could not quite believe my eyes. Walking towards us was a lady, no taller than 4 feet 6 inches. Remarkably small, almost childlike. Her complexion was pale, and her hair was almost white. She was very slim. Her face was flawless. She looked to be aged 16 to 18, but it was hard to tell. She wore nothing but a white veil over her hair and a Victorian-looking nightgown walking barefoot. Her feet and ankles were covered in soot or ash, and so dirty they were black. What followed was frightening, and when I think about it, tears run down my face. So we make eye contact. I was drawn to her eyes staring me. This stare was not a stare of interest or as if she wanted to ask us something. This was a stare of hatred. She stared into my eyes like she wanted me dead. She stared so intensely I felt she could see right through me. I felt invisible and vulnerable. Her stare lasted about three seconds or until we passed each other. These are the things I can't explain. I can't explain why she was dressed in a Victorian-style nightgown and veil, in miserable, slightly cold weather. Even the homeless wore warm coats and were fully dressed. I can't explain why her legs and feet were black as coal. This was not dust or dirt. This had to be coal. But modern cities are no longer coated in soot from burning coal, So how did her legs and feet get so black? Why would someone stare at a stranger like they wanted to kill them? It was not just my interpretation. Who I was with also agreed with me. I'd done nothing to cause this reaction. Most people would look away if they were caught staring. This lady kept staring at me. I can't explain why there is no trace of this lady online or on social media considering she walked through the middle of Berlin. With her appearance and the history of the white lady ghost, 
I don't understand how there is no trace of that experience. I read on the Berlin Dungeons website, quote, The appearance of the White Lady only meant one thing, definite death. Does that explain why I felt like she wanted me dead when she stared at me? This experience has not turned me into a believer of ghosts, but it has made me believe in the possibility of ghosts, which I honestly thought I would never say. I feel more inclined to read ghost stories and not just doubt it all. I've thought about it a lot, from her being an actor from the dungeons, to her being a lure, to her being a hippie. But nothing, at least not yet, has hit the nail on the head or even come close to feeling like a possibility. Weird things happen in the world. Maybe it's just one of those things. If I could go back in time and find out, I would. Yeah, there are strange and unexplained occurrences that go on in the world, Alex. And this woman you saw totally fit the description of the white lady. There's no telling why she chose you and your friend to appear to. But I hope this encounter was not a true portent of death for you or anyone in your life. Our final story comes from FTY Throwaway, whose nature hike deep in the Washington State Mountains could have gone a different direction if they would have followed the girl. My fiancé and I had just moved to a Seattle suburb and had been exploring the greater Seattle area. We loved to hike, kayak, and just generally be outside. We would go on a few trips a year to well-known mountainous cities. We had heard about Leavenworth, Washington, about two hours from Seattle, from new friends, co-workers, and acquaintances all the time. It's a quaint little German town in the Cascade Mountains. It's beautiful in every season and attracts tons of people. We finally decided to go and were super excited. We stayed at this B&B that was far into the Wenatchee Forest, and I was uneasy because it seemed like the type of place you'd be murdered in in the movies. The B&B was amazing, though, and the owners were super friendly and helpful. It turned out that it wasn't the place that was going to frighten me to my very core, and haunt me for years to come. That would come later when we decided to go on a last minute hike on our way out of the mountains. We had not planned for the hike because it was just a short weekend trip. Luckily for Washington hikers, there's a website, WTA.org, that shows you all the trails in the area, and we quickly hopped on and found a few trails. If you have ever used this site, you'd know sometimes these trails are incredibly difficult to find. Directions aren't real great or accurate, and sometimes you have to look pretty hard to find a trailhead. After driving for half an hour, we became frustrated and eventually just pulled off to a random trail that was marked on the highway. As we were driving down the road, we were disappointed again when we pulled up to a large roadblock sign reading, Road Washout. We decided, forget it, let's park here get up and walk up the road towards the trail, and if the road gets sketchy, we'll turn back. We really just wanted to be outside and walk through the mountains and forests after all. We were having a good time enjoying ourselves and the weather was great. After walking about half a mile, we reached the so-called road washout, which didn't exist because it was repaired. It looked like it had possibly been at one point, but was completely covered now and functional. We thought it was weird, but shrugged it off and kept walking. The trees were tall above us, and we were clearly ascending into the mountains. It became very quiet and still, and neither of us had spoken for a few minutes as we took in the views. We started to hike towards a switch back in the path, and that's when we saw her a little girl running away from us. She was tiny with blonde hair, not wearing layers of clothing like you would assume for the weather. 
She was definitely four to six years old based on her size and coordination. She wasn't in dirty clothes, but not immaculate either. It was September in the mountains. It was probably 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside. She didn't turn to look back. We never saw her face. She just silently kept running around that switchback that was wide and sharp. It was quiet. No sounds of footsteps or voices of parents or any other people with her. We instantly looked at each other to see if the other had seen her. Our eyes met and we quickly looked back to her. I stopped walking and grabbed her arm. I quietly said, There isn't anyone else out here, and no one else was parked at the roadblock. All he said was, Yeah. In that moment, you have so much going through your head. Logical and illogical thoughts consume your mind. In an instant, we both just turned around and started booking it back down the path, silently and as fast as we could go. The whole way down, I just kept thinking there were no houses around, anywhere. No cars parked or signs that people lived here. I'm not sure what he was thinking, but probably something similar. We didn't say much on the way down, if anything at all. Just an intense, fast walk towards the car. As soon as we got in with doors locked, we talked the whole way trying to determine what we saw. He offered. It was probably a girl with her family, and they were just on the other side of the switchback. There was probably a house around the corner, a kid's park, or something else normal was around that corner. None of it fit, though. As we went over the logical reasons why she was there, we also wondered, what if it was a real lost little girl? Or worse, a kidnapped little girl? We then had guilt for not investigating further. But when we tell others the story, we can't shake the feeling we had in that moment, which was, something is not right. Run. My ultimate conclusion is she wasn't a real girl at all. She was a ghost girl. Okay, FTY throwaway. It's hard to imagine what anyone would do in a situation like that. And it's important to just trust your instincts. If the both of you immediately felt the need to get out of there... I would have to agree that something was not right. I hope you guys have been able to shake the guilt of not investigating further, because who knows if the ghost girl was a trap for something worse. Well, that does it for this episode. If you'd like to submit your own personal spooky tale to be read on the show, head to hauntedpod.com and click on the link to submit your story. You can also email me at hauntedpod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts or your podcast player of choice. It really does help us out. You can find us on Twitter at podcast underscore haunted, Instagram at it's haunted what now, or at hauntedpod.com. Production assistance provided by Aaliyah Lopez. Writing assistance by Sherilyn Reyes. Audio engineering by Chez at Gray Multimedia. And producer is Neeks at We Talk of Dreams. Check him out on Twitter at We Talk of Dreams or We Talk of Dreams.com. Until next time. Did you hear that?